Hey guys, King Gath here with another episode of the King Gath Podcast. Today's guest is a professional, uh, I guess, uh, what would you call that, trailer maker? I didn't even know that was a thing, but it's so cool that it is. Uh, he does trailers for games, and uh, in particular, many of you, many of my viewers will have seen his work with the Fallout Miami uh, trailer, the Fallout Cascadia trailer, and recently the super viral uh, Obl Sky Oblivion trailer, Welcome Pontus. Hello, thank you. So I think right now, everybody, what's on everybody's mind is that Sky Oblivion trailer because it is gorgeous, and I think that's one of those like dream projects we all we all hope will get finished, but we none of us are really like uh, holding our breath because it's been in development for so damn long. How, what was it like working on that trailer? It was uh, extremely fun. Uh, such a great team to work with, uh, Rebel and Lutist and uh, and Markers uh, that uh, composed the music for the trailer. It was just uh, a ton of fun uh, working on uh, a very very different uh, experience from the um, the Fallout mods because just how far they've gotten uh, it's just a different mindset when I film everything so I can be much more like I don't have how do you say it? I don't really have to um, think a lot about distance and uh, you you know LD not loading everywhere and all that as so it's a ton of fun. Yeah, for sure. Because with um, I think with the Fallout mods, they're still earlier in the production, so they don't have their LOD set up or anything. So they probably have to kind of exactly. control so, the space you can work in. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I have to think about a lot more about the uh, um, the angle I can film in. Uh, it's a little bit more limited uh, when it comes to the earlier mods. Sure, uh, but sure. Sky Oblivion was uh, much more open and uh, what's yeah. It's a different feel working on. Now, did you get did you get free reign to their current build? Like, were you able to, or whatever build you, you started filming? And I imagine this process takes a little while to get your trailer together. But did you get to play with it and like search around for areas you thought would be nice for the trailer? Yes. Uh, so uh, I just asked Rebel uh, for like uh, interesting locations that he think that would be fit fit the trailer, and uh, uh, he just gave me a list, and uh, I visited those uh, specific areas uh, but i also ran around the world because uh, it's a lot of the world is finished it's just uh, they have gone through uh, i think some of the areas have gone through their lost pa pass maybe uh, yeah. don't quote me on that but <laughs> they look like like uh, generally everything looks very good yeah like there's not uh, there's not a lot of stuff floating everywhere and all that so like it, it felt so, like it could. It felt like it was close to a release-worthy build for you. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. awesome. Did did you did you play Oblivion when it was out originally? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I actually never finished it, <laughs> but I do remember playing it uh, quite a lot. Uh, but I was pretty young uh, then. Yeah, I think that's the case for a lot a lot of Bethesda games. A lot of people have have played a lot of them and then never finished them. I think I don't think I ever finished Morrowind. Like I just kept I just love the process of starting new characters and just wandering yeah. off in any direction but where I'm supposed to be going for the main exactly. quest. Exactly. Uh, so did it feel did did it uh, get any nostalgia rises out of you wandering around in in the recreated Oblivion? Um, not really, not that much. Um, it was so long. For, it was so long time ago that I played it, so I don't really remember that much from the game. Uh, sure. There are some spe uh, obviously there's some specific areas that I do remember, yeah. and seeing them uh, like being made again uh, to yeah. modern uh, feel is just uh, super impressive to see their work and just how it looks and feels. It's just uh, if you when you just look and uh, compare uh, the uh, original game to the Sky Oblivion is just uh, a huge difference. Yeah, it's such a huge jump, and and Bethesda did a great job with the uh, the assets in Skyrim that they. I, I outside of maybe the the uh, character models, which feel a little dated, the the actual world space in Skyrim and in the engine feels very timeless. It has a kind of stylized view to it or look to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, big big fan of that. So I, I can't wait personally to play through uh, Sky Oblivion. That looks like it's going to be an awesome project. So it was really cool uh, to see that trailer blow up and go so popular. It was covered by you know all the major gaming sites, and uh, I think that trailer's got I think it's closing in on two million views if I'm not mistaken. I think it's around two point seven. Oh my Lost god! Three. So yeah, three closing uh, in on three. Wow, yeah. a lot of people it's are hyped the, for that. Yeah, it's super fun to see the reactions uh, from everyone. 
Yeah, for sure. Now, this isn't the first uh, trailer you've had gone viral because the uh, Fallout Miami trailer blew up yes. like crazy. Um, yeah. Was that so? So I guess let's let's set a little background here. And um, before I proceed, I should have asked you this before the interview. But um, you have done a lot of trailers for a particular company. Do you mind talking about that, or do you prefer not to talk about the companies you work with? Uh, no, I, I can talk about it. Okay, awesome, awesome. So you do a lot of trailer work for Paradox. There, uh, for for my viewers, you guys, uh, anybody a fan or fans of Sims Elements, you probably also love games like City Skylines. And you did some of the official trailers for Paradox, a bunch of their different games like Stellaris. Um, City Skylines and quite a few others. So, yeah. Uh, so, so is that is that one of your? Are do you work directly for them, or is, are they a client of yours and you're a uh, contract worker for them? A uh, client. So, I started freelancing for them. Um, I think around 2000 and um, <coughs> uh, 2016. Okay. I think I started freelancing for uh, a little bit for Paradox. Uh, my my old uh, let's see university teacher uh, he contacted me you know, pretty randomly and uh, asked if I wanted to try to make a trailer for them because um, when I studied in university I I made some fan trailers for Battlefield Four and um, so he saw those and thought that I perhaps could do something for them uh, as just a cinematic trailer in a game and uh, so. I got a code for uh, Europa Universalis, and um, I just started recording and started to editing and uh, look on previous trailers and uh, uh, as a reference. And then I came up with a DLC trailer for them, and they liked it. And that, yeah, that's oh, just that's fantastic. So you basically yeah. went from you basically just took what you had available and made a fan trailer, or did they send you an early build of uh, of the uh, DLC? Uh, they sent me an early uh, version of the DLC. Oh, that's fantastic! Uh, so, yeah. so what is your? So, I, I guess this is there's probably this is probably a, a deeper question than I think it is. Uh, what is your uh, basic approach to making a game story? I per, I personally am a I love building uh, trailers and stuff. I actually you, one of my big hobbies used to be making music videos, uh, yeah. and I feel like the process the process is similar. But what is your process for attacking a trailer? Like when you're when you're getting started, how do you how do you get started on that? Um, I usually start with the uh, music first. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, of course, I uh, I start with like the general feel and like what we want to show and um, uh, yeah, what features we want to show or visuals and all that. But uh, the music is very important to me for to begin with because um, it usually sets the tone and uh, the pacing. Mm -hmm. And uh, just listening to the music, I can hear parts where I think would fit for the trailer and what kind of imagery, uh, like the visuals could be to fit the music part. And yeah. uh, and I usually like the first uh, work in progress video is basically just the music cut and with uh, black background and white text just describing what's happening. Um, oh, I like that. That's yeah. That's that's like super basic um and it's very helpful i think just to set up the structure of the trailer and um and and then decide on what i should record and uh and sometimes i don't even decide what to record sometimes it's just like free roaming in the game and just find angles or if it's some action shots i just let the ai play maybe and i just fly around with the camera and let the just try to find some interesting shots and uh so yeah, that's that's basically how I usually start a trailer. Yeah, I, I I love working to music. I think it really it really helps guide the whole production because it tells you know you know that during a swell you should do maybe a camera movement or during a lot of uh, a percussion you're going to be doing camera cuts and it just really helps. I love I love yeah, the absolutely. way it, and it feels so good too. It like if it feel and I think that's where I think that's how most movie trailers suck us in too. Where like every movie trailer looks awesome and then half the movies suck. Uh, yep. It's because they're so good at tying it all into the music, and you just get pulled in. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, I, it's a huge, huge part. So you've really, you've really got one of uh, my dream jobs because it seems to be one of those things where uh, every, where everything you make is is magic because uh, you get to, <laughs> you get to make the the you get to make everything look amazing, regardless of whether it actually is. And that's really cool. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very lucky to have the uh, work I have. Um, was never really planned to to have. I w I really never planned to make it, make it as a trailer producer. Um, it kind of just happened, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun at work. Yeah, for sure. Did did you uh, intend to go into film of some sort? Like, did you have training in uh, cinematography or, or anything like that? Uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, that's like the end game for me uh, is uh, to start working more on uh, film uh, and yeah, specifically uh, cinematography. I, well, I think it's pro. I mean, it seems like the the two art forms are slowly merging together as the the quality of 3D in games gets closer and closer mm. to the same quality and fidelity of the movie CGI to where it's going to be like the experience in one is going to translate well to the experience in the other, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. Um, just having access to a camera and using the controller to just fly around with the camera and um, you, you have a lot more, you can experiment uh, a lot quicker just in game than uh, you maybe you know in real life running mm -hmm. around with the camera you can just like f throw up the camera and let it fly around uh, but in, you know in game you can just experiment like fly around everywhere and change the feel of you to to what you like and uh, just play around a lot more and uh, i think it, it's been a huge help for me to um, to learn a lot more about cinematography and just yes, camera movements in general. Um, sure, it's almost like yeah. a cheap. It's like a cheap way to learn because you don't have to like set up. You know, you have to pay for a. You don't have to rent a helicopter to do an aerial yeah. shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh, do you do you find there's any restrictions in gaming though that where where maybe it would be easier to do in real life? Because I would imagine that there's some things that are maybe don't work as well in a game as they do in real life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, not every game has that very good um, like debug tools, and um, there's a lot of some games. Just you know, uh, some devs don't really put that much time to make uh, a decent camera tool uh, for the game. Um, but um, uh, that's something I think Bethesda's really done really well. Just you know, you just press the tilde key and then you can just write down whatever command you want uh, that the engine uh, allows but there's a lot of variation and a lot of options you can do um, but um, yeah I mean real life and video games um, like one of the things that I, I is I think it, it comes down to again like where you're talking about how much effort the devs put into it but um, I would imagine that one of the the controls you'd have easier access to in real life would be things like depth of field and um, you know yeah, uh, yeah access to um, ch controlling the lighting a little more because even though ironically you could control the lighting easier in the game that's not usually a tool you're gonna get access to in real time in the game that's more something you would have to use the, the editor for yeah exactly uh, a lot of games that I've worked on uh maybe don't have super duper good camera tools and sometimes they are more your enemy than ally <laughs> um, i've had a camera tool that actually got stuck on geometry in the world so if i <laughs> accidentally uh, just move the camera in, into a landscape it got stuck uh, so i had to like move like look down and uh, use the right stick so it would just fly up in the air again and then i was free <laughs> uh, was, yeah there's some weird uh funky camera tools uh definitely um now do you give that kind of feedback to like paradox or whoever you're working with so that maybe ne for next game they can make a better camera <laughs> yeah i've yeah uh if i find a find a problem or something that i would uh, wish they could solve then i ask, ask them if they can uh, do it and um sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't so you know you have to adapt to what kind of camera tools you have available in the game for sure yeah that's i guess that's where i was leading with that was so then do you end up having to do less storyboarding and more just kind of following the flow of what the game's going to allow you to do yeah there's some mostly i i mostly don't use storyboard okay um for video games uh i mostly just know what i'm going to shoot um and then I just go inside the game and try to find an angle uh, that the game uh, lets me to do. Um, 
so that's where that where your where your framework up front kind of comes into play where you're laying out like this music i would like to put in this you have maybe your feature list from the devs that they want to highlight yeah. okay that's interesting exactly so let so it's it's a little less uh pre-planned than real than uh irl filmmaking yeah i would say so um because you really never know um especially if the game is is still in development uh there's there can be a lot of problems or a lot of bugs and the stuff that they can't really fix uh, during the time you have to shoot something inside the game. Right, because a lot of times the first trailer is coming out a year or more before the game's ready. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I guess that's so, not that's not any different than the mods you've been doing trailers for either. Yeah. Um, the um, the good thing is that it's, it's based on the complete game, and uh, so you know all all. All commands and all that, there is all the same for uh, the Elder Scrolls of Fallout. They use the same commands. Um, yeah. So I'm very lucky with that. Uh, it's a, it's a lot of fun to work on those. Is that what are yes. what are your what are your favorite ga- favorite uh, games to make trailers in? Are they the Bethesda games, or do you have you found enjoyment in some of the other ones you've worked in? Um. Hmm. No, I think it's uh, I think it's Fallout and Elder Scrolls. Uh, I've I've had a blast creating trailers inside them um just a lot of because of the um the um the teams i have i i get to, to work with um it's just like very passionate projects for everyone and uh, and you really f- you really feel that when you have a, when a discord meeting whatever uh speak in the chat uh, with the creators and uh, everybody's just pumped to get something done yeah uh, and it's uh, it's a complete different feeling uh, sometimes I think. Uh, it's working especially with clients. sure, sure. Because well, when you're working with a client, you're there's always the there's the money constraint, there's time constraints, yeah. And then exactly. it's less about creative, like just unlimited creative energy, and more like, all right, we've got to do this, but it's got to be controlled and has to be done by a yeah. specific deadline within certain budgets. Yeah, and that's understandable. You know, right, right. It's absolutely. business, so um, so that's totally understandable. So that's I'm very happy to have the option as well to work with mod projects uh yeah so that so i guess then are you uh 100 freelance then you work you work explicitly doing contract work as opposed to like being tied down to a nine to five uh no i'm i'm tied down to uh a, a trailer production company uh, oh here okay somewhere. very yeah. cool um so but you still find the energy to come home and work on trailers for mod teams yes that's <laughs> that's awesome uh because not a lot of people do i know some people who um, I've seen uh, I've seen big modders who have made announcements like I'm starting a new job. I just when I get home from work, I need to wind down, and they quit um, because yeah. you know depending on your job. Like I mentioned earlier, you have a on your your website, you have a uh, a little uh, live action film that you produced and uh, did the cinematography for called Service, which I which I really loved, and it uh, it kind of shows that aspect of the fact that a lot of people have jobs they hate, and then they come home, scream into a pillow, and rinse and repeat. <laughs> And like that, have you know, finding the energy if you're feeling like that to actually uh, keep working on anything is a uh, is a challenge. So um, it's good to hear you must you must enjoy your job then if you're uh, if you're willing to come home and keep doing more of it. Yeah, I, I love it. It's a uh, it's a ton of fun. Um, it's uh, yeah, I'm I'm very lucky uh, to have uh, yeah yes to have the option to work with these people. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you said you kind of fell into this. So obviously, so one, one of the things I wanted to ask you is what, so with this podcast, one of the things I, I love to do is is kind of help people who are interested in getting into modding or even professional uh, development of any type is kind of helping them get some hints about how to do that. Obviously, you fell into it by accident, so maybe you can't speak to that. But um, from what you've learned about what it actually is like um, versus maybe what you thought it was up front, how is... Uh, uh, what would you say to anybody who's who would like to get into the trailer business? Like, what kind of advice could you offer them? Maybe not to get in because you you got in by accident, but um, what kind of advice could you offer them to increase to improve their skills and to hit the the level of quality required to work in a production company like you do? Yeah, um, I think I think really a portfolio is super important. Um, having something to show, obviously, because trailer it's a very visual uh media uh so you know do some fan trailers and um and uh maybe ask around for 
for other mod projects uh, if they need someone to take care of the trailers for them. Um, I can't really imagine a lot of people saying no to that. Um, right. But if you have something to show, that would be a, maybe get the higher chance to actually work with them. Um, but yeah, I, I think fan trailers is a is a very good start to get into and to have something to show. Um, and there's a lot of different games, obviously, that you can do this. Um, uh, I made one with for the um, Metro Exodus uh, game. Oh, I made awesome. a fan trailer of, and um, and that, and I made that trailer just to showcase uh, a bit more that I can do trailers in first-person shooter games. Uh, sure. Because because I mainly do trailers for strategy games. Yeah. Um, so I made a fan trailer that was very more specific for the first-person shooter aspect, and um, uh, and that was a completely new, different experience and challenge. Uh, but now I have that trailer to, you know, like show people like, yeah, I, I can do these kinds of trailers as well, because if you maybe come up to a client or a mod project or something, and maybe it's only strategy games you have in your portfolio and it's, and you asking if you can do a trailer for a first person game that, you know, you don't really have something that they might find interesting, uh, or they don't even know if you have the knowledge to make something sure. for first person. So so I think fan trailers is just a good start uh, in general. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. That seems like, I mean, just building out any <clears throat> completed products. I mean, I, I always uh, am harking on the fact that modding is a great thing to add to people's portfolios because it, or even uh, voice acting in a mod because you mm. get something that looks super professional and AAA that you get to show off and knowing that yeah. you did do part of it even though maybe you didn't actually work on Fallout 4 but the fact that you have something that's using the Fallout 4 uh, engine as the backdrop just looks really professional yeah exactly so how do you go about um, when when you want to start a trailer for a fan made? Do you do the same process of you you find a piece of music you like, think about the things you want to highlight, and then go forward from there? Um, when I made the Metro trailer, it was more. There, I started to think about more what I wanted to show, um, mm -hmm. like the story of the trailer or the structure of the trailer. And, okay. Uh, and um, because there's limits, there's a limitation for the Metro game uh, because I can't access the camera, so I can't fly around with a third-person camera, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I decided to have the trailer like all in in uh, in the player's character's uh, perspective. So it's always first person. Yeah. Uh, the, um, and um, so I decided to like have have the trailer like Artyom's journey, uh, like uh, from beginning to like, and like showcase different threats and all that, and like the vast different environments, but all through the character's eyes. What a uh, great game, so what was, a great game for that too, because it's so immersive yeah. with all of its elements, like it's HUD and everything, like everything's a physical object. So it seems perfect yes. for that. Exactly, so yeah, exactly. So I played on the hardest difficulty, uh, okay. so there's no HUD at all. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that was the challenge itself. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was like the main, uh, like the main goal was to create the trailer, um, in 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 all in first person view. Uh, and then I found music, so it was a little bit different uh, from what I have done before. Um, now, would you say that was unique to Metro, or was that the way you would approach any fan trailer you wanted to make? Um, I think that would be. Uh, when it's a story, when it's a game with more of a story, uh -huh. um, because I have the games I've done um, for other clients is mostly like you know strategy games and uh, uh, sandbox games and all that. They don't really have a single player mode, right? So, so the metric trailer was pretty much also the first like story trailer I've done. Um, so it really depends on what kind of the trailer uh, I do and. Uh, what I want to tell and show. Sure. So let, let's talk about it then in specific. So let's talk about the trailers you've done for these mods. So we have the Skyber, like the three that come to mind right now are these, 
three of the ones that you've had uh, that went that kind of blew up, and that would be the the recent Sky Oblivion trailer, the Fallout Miami trailer, and the Cascadia trailer. What were your approaches for uh, each of those? Was it uh, story driven? Because, uh, for example, like the Miami one felt very story driven. You can hear it, there's the voiceover work, and it felt like you were kind of telling a tale. Uh, Cascadia yeah. one, I didn't get quite that same feel to it. No. Nope. And and then uh, Sky Oblivion, I I mean, I just was just entranced by it. just like, <laughs> oh my god, we get to go back to uh, we get a new Skyrim essentially in another <laughs> world. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, so so um, the Fallout Mayhem trailer. Uh, so I worked with uh, with different people from the Miami team, and uh, and they had Constantine and Balin. They had like they kind of knew what they wanted the trailer to be like. So they had written a script and um, casted the person to do the, the voiceover, and um, so so I get the script and the voiceover um so then i know by us looking at it like what kind of specific scenes that we need um and we talk uh, back and forth uh and uh come up with different scenes uh that the trailer could use um so and then they have uh, some people in the development team to set up these scenes and um and then i just you know, go in and record, and um, but I was like the general structure was pretty much planned already. Already mm -hmm. when I jumped into that uh, project, uh, okay. So, so that I don't really have to do a lot of like, uh, you know, I, I'm not the guy who uh, writes uh, down the script or something. Sure, sure. Um, so I get the script and then I, you know, translate it uh, into something visual. So they had it. They had it virtually outlined for you, and you were just collecting the appropriate footage to to tell that story. Yeah, kinda. Uh, okay. So, uh, like we 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 all knew we wanted to open with the you know the classic Fallout uh, radio or TV. You know, like yeah. I, I honestly I think that's why you, that one went so viral. Is it looks legitimately like a Bethesda made trailer. Like it yeah. looks like <laughs> like oh my god, is Bethesda doing a? Is that gonna be their fall? Is that gonna be their new Vegas to Fallout Four? I think that's what a lot of people thought when that came out because it looks so legit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we timed it pretty well with the uh, Fallout seventy six. Um, um, thing when it came out that it would be online gameplay uh, online only right um, right so okay. the the backlash kind of like went in our, our favor yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah um and when it comes to the uh, sky oblivion trailer that's, that's just pretty much the same thing uh like rebel had had a plan like what he generally wanted so he he uh, he had the script uh, and the voiceover done, mm -hmm. uh, most most of it, and uh, like the first beginning of the trailer, that was that was recorded pretty long time ago. Okay. Um, and the the last part we added maybe like not that long ago. Uh, so, but you know, he he has a, he has a general idea what he wants with the trailer and. Um, like the intro he wanted the running uh, thing and uh, you know cut uh, back and forth between like beauty shots and then you cut cut back to the running scene again and it uh, come and it's um, and it ends with the you know the character seeing the oblivion gate and uh, but uh, but it's always been very open like i've ha i've had a lot of freedoms when i do these trailers uh, okay so you know i come up with my with my own things i use what they they said and uh, uh, but I also come up with my own things, so it's uh, so it's fairly collaborative then when you work on these. Yeah, very. Uh, okay. I've I've have couldn't have done anything of these this these trailers uh, without the the teams, of course. Right, right. I mean, I mean that they're receptive to your ideas, just like you're receptive to the uh, the vision they yeah. have. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so and then how about and then how about the uh, Cascadia trailer? What was that? What was your approach on that one? So the Cascadia trailer is much more of. Um, uh, tonality uh just getting a tone um it, it wasn't really like uh, that trailer for me is more um it's just much 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 more of a, like a mood trailer sure. um just uh showcasing different uh, environments so people can see how far they come with the environment and how they look um 
and uh, and I just go into the world and re record uh, a lot of footage, and uh, I choose the um, song as well. Um, what's the name again? Uh, can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. It's been a while since uh, I watched that one. Yeah, it's um, Moon River. Uh, it's uh, and I choose the song because I like the the tone it gave. Yeah, and uh, and would and it complemented very well with the uh, the 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 shots I I did. Sure. Um, and that one, you know, that one was just me playing around with the like with the mood trailer, uh, and it wasn't really that much talk about it. Like, uh, like, yeah, it was, uh, if, if I remember, it was pre a pretty spontaneous trailer. Um, it still, I mean, it still did well. I think it's got about a half a million views right now, and people are yeah. definitely hyped for it. It's a very good trailer. Yeah. Um, it looks, it looks beautiful. Uh, and yeah. one, one of the things that I, I saw in in both of the trailers that I think really made those the, of the uh, Miami and the uh, Cascadia that made them seem real professional is the uh, the really nicely done CGI logos used at the end of them. Now, is that all stuff that the teams produced and then they just handed off to you to clip onto the end, or do you do any of that type of work or any of the sound effect work or any of that? um the the first uh the miami teaser uh, mm -hmm. that i made um i made the i animated the logo uh, okay you know the flickering on all that uh but then we we got the the new polished uh, 3d logo that looks uh, super professional uh and i i didn't do that one um uh so that they uh, kind of gave it to me and sure, uh, sure. i just put it in the end uh the fallout cascadia trailer logo i animated as well okay. uh, i got that as a photoshop file and i animated in in uh, after effects yeah it looks it looks really good do you do sound effect work when you're uh, doing these things or is it mostly just in-game sound and i have and, uh, uh, i have some contacts like i work with two guys um that do sound design okay uh, uh luckily i have them uh they really elevate the trailer to the next level uh with their work but the, the you know we we uh, when it comes to sound design uh, in video game trailers, I always try to be very true to the, how it sounds in game. But yeah. you know, you want to elevate it a little bit more with sound work, um, like make some things like maybe sound like sound have a little bit more of an oomph in them. Sure. Uh, and uh, and you know uh, like transition between scenes and uh, the music and all that that's that's what they do and uh, that's yeah. what they do really good just to make the trailer just flow a lot better if you, if you would see the scape even trailer without sound design and with sound design that it's a huge difference like oh yeah just feel absolutely. and and uh, and and how it flows yeah, and so, so some of it is some of it's very subtle, but it makes a big difference. I've noticed this. So I, I, I do a uh, Let's Play series on YouTube, and um, uh, Luke, my editor, has started doing sound, adding sound effects with the transitions that match, like just doing like little light swooshes and stuff like that, and it yeah. feels so much better. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, insane how much of, of a difference it makes. And it's one of those things where if it was missing, you probably wouldn't be able to pin. I, a lot of people wouldn't be able to pinpoint what was missing. You just be like, that felt a little different. Yeah. But it, yeah, yeah, it adds it adds to the to the whole um, professional feel of the thing. Yeah, definitely, and that that's what I personally think also that makes them stand out a little bit more. Now, when you were doing back in the day before you were uh, doing this professionally, did you what would you have done to fill in stuff like that? Would you have just used sound libraries, or had you not even gotten far enough along to to understand the the, uh, the benefits of things like that? Um, I used sound libraries. Um, I have my own little sound library on my hard drive um, with all different kind of sounds. And um, when I started like making trailers, I used sounds from that hard drive. Uh, okay. But now, uh, now when I started working for the uh, the company I work at now, we have a, a dedicated sound designer. So you so, just um, you just ship over a little clip and be like, hey, I need something for this, and they hook you up. Yeah, and we uh, and I sit down in the studio uh, and we talk back and forth. Like I I tell him what I want, like with the sound, and uh, if there's some specific sounds I want, I tell him. But then I just pretty much let him do his work. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I mean, it's always magic. It's always great. <laughs> so, and I'm 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 super excited every every time I just leave them uh, to work with that stuff because it makes such a huge difference. And, um, and uh, there's not a lot of people don't know the difference it makes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, uh, and it, uh, just on that other aspect of working with a team where you know you can take something that's like, okay, I would be serviceable at this, but this guy is going to take it to 11. That feels so awesome when you know you can count on somebody on your yeah. team to like take a job and just run with it where you would have maybe, you know, you would have got it 80% of the way there, but knowing that they'll run with it and take it to 100%, is so, it just feels so good. Yeah, uh, just the feeling of team effort uh, yeah. when working on these trailers has been uh, so cool. Uh, it's just a uh, such a cool feeling to have creating something uh, together and just laying it out to people to react on. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great feeling. So what are what would you say to people who want to get into that? And I know you mentioned doing trailers and stuff. So one of the um, things that I've uh, seen or I've personally run into is uh, people who aren't quite up to snuff yet who want to learn it um, and they ask to help out and they deliver something that's subpar um and then the person will give them feedback and it's how what, have you had have you run into that personally where you got some negative feedback that may be a little hard to take on something that you turned in uh where uh you had to make some adjustments and like what would you recommend people do to get over that because that's a, i think that's a big thing that's one of the big hard parts of transitioning from a private creator to somebody who's doing it for a job is that you've got to be able to take client critique and run with it yeah it's uh it's always hard you know it's um if you really, really like what you've done, and then you know the clients or people says they don't really like it, you know it's it's always going to be hard. But um, I think it's very important to also try to see from their perspective. Um, if you don't agree, you know, if you don't agree, you you don't. And um, if you, you if you always can uh, argument why you think the way you think, uh, then you know. Then, uh, and it depends on the clients as well. And but uh, mostly, when uh, personal experience, if I argument for what I think, and I have a reason for it, mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly uh, goes my way, or you know, uh, or they understand more why I've done that, and they can accept it or something. Sure. Um, if you don't, if you can't argument on why you have done a specific thing, then it you sh probably shouldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> Because, um, yeah, that's just something that I've learned that uh, you should always have an argument to why you've made something, a certain thing. It, it, and it, sometimes it's just, you know, like it just feels better and you can't really, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, like tell it's hard to articulate tell it in why. words. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, that happens. And, um, uh, but yeah, I've, I haven't, like, can't really remember a time where I've been shut down, like for uh, from feedback uh, in recent memory. Uh, but when you're starting, I guess is where I would see people would, would definitely run into this because it takes a while to get you know where you fully understand everything you're even doing. So like sometimes yeah. you know, like you said, if it feels right to you but you can't really put it into words, you might have trouble defending it. I'd also yeah. say that uh, from working in a lot of uh, I do a lot of web design. And uh, it's in a similar case of sometimes I'll deliver something and it doesn't meet the expectations of the client. And often the, uh, the problem is not only do I, did I miss the mark on it, but that the client themselves wasn't able to articulate what they actually want. And so yeah. I find that sometimes having the explanation of why you did it will help you communicate to get to that point where you're both talking the same language. Exactly. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good to... I think that for anybody starting up and trying to get into this, I think, um, it, like for example, if you know what you said of them, you know, suggest they create uh, fan trailers or approach mods. Is anytime they're going to approach somebody else where you're creating a trailer for somebody else's project and you want to offer them a thing, is you have to be you have to understand that it's that it's their baby. They've got a certain tone for it that they want to to keep in contact with it and so uh if you if you stray from that too far you, you don't you know take the take the criticism as uh as a chance to learn as opposed to taking it too personal because for them it's just yeah. you know that while it was you know it was important to you in the way you did, did the trailer it the project is important to them and they and so they were are going to have even probably even more uh 
uh, I guess, uh, personal investment into it than you would. Exactly. So, so ha for, how, having done strategy games a lot and having done some first person stuff for, for your personal projects, what, does there, you said you, pref you really like working in FO4 and, and uh, Skyrim for the, for the engine. Do you prefer the first person style or you, do you prefer the strategy or do they each have their, their highs and lows to them? Uh, I personally prefer the first person. Uh, I play per first person games mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, or third-person games. Um, I don't really play strategy games that much, uh, yeah. but I do enjoy making trailers for them. Uh, yeah, mostly. you certainly make them look beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I watched your City Thank Skylines you. trailers. I was like, oh, I kind of want to go play City Skylines. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, but they, they must, yeah, I mean, they like you said, they've each got their own. It seems like the first-person uh, and third-person, they tend to be more narrative games, so then you are you get to tell a story, which has got to yeah. scratch that itch you have as a, a future cinematographer. Um, yeah, which has definitely got to be be nice for when you're and when you're they, approaching strategy games. Does it tend to be more feature driven then? So it's more like, all right, I have to show off this particular aspect of the game. Yeah, definitely, uh, and, and especially if it's uh, DLC. Um, sure, sure. You need to showcase like what's new in this one, and uh, so yeah, they are mostly mostly just uh, focused on uh, DLC uh, on on features on new features. Um, but some games and some DLCs are just uh, like I've I've gotten briefs briefs that's just basically said um, make it look cool, <laughs> and uh, and that's all I you know I come up with the structure and um, sometimes it's very free to for me what what I want to do uh, yeah. and that's very that's a lot of fun, um, and sometimes it's a it's, it's a more challenge if if it's the brief is just make it look cool but. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's a balance sometimes. Like, yeah, they, sometimes they're very specific, or sometimes they're not specific, and and you just let you do your thing. Uh, yeah, and both of them are really fun. I think. I, I would I would imagine that if they tell you to just make it look cool, probably makes it a lot easier to make it look cool if you enjoy the game and the genre. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Some of those are probably a challenge if you're not. It's like, oh, this isn't my bag, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I found that the strategy games are. They are challenging to record. Um, like, um, um, especially when it's very much up to the AI to do the work. Sometimes, like, some games, uh, when it's uh, when it's a player versus player game, uh, I just let the AI play out and uh, fight each other. Yeah. And they just fly around with the camera. Um, but, um, but yeah, a strategy being strategy, like uh, every, everything can happen, and uh, and you just have to be very quick with the camera to find, try to find some interesting fights or um, or locations or something like. And um, if you miss it, you miss it. Then then you have to maybe try a new match, and you know it takes time. Yeah. Uh, instead of a first person game like Metro, for example. Sure. Um, it's very linear. Uh, I, I go down this corridor. This will happen. Like <laughs> it will always happen. And uh, right. I just can't do this recording once or twice. And and that part is done. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I find the strategy games to be a bit more uh, difficult to record in. Um, so now, how yeah. do you de how do you deal with uh, with spoilers so this is one of the things that i always find a challenge when i'm trying to put together a mod trailer is i i love having some amount of surprise for the player to discover but yeah if i do too much then i don't excite them enough because some of the excitement is you show them something really cool and then they're like how do i get that and they have to go play the game and figure it out um yeah. do you tend to get a lot of guidelines from the your clients of like don't you know, don't show this. I know you want to, but we want that to be a surprising game. Or are they just kind of like, just show whatever you want so that it looks cool? Hmm. When, um, yeah, that's a good question. When it comes to the strategy games, it's uh, it hasn't really been that much like spoiler things uh, for for me to not shoot or something. Um, right, because there's not really a single player campaign or something. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like you want, and there's not really like a lot of surprises or something like uh, cinematics or anything like that. Um, but when I've done stuff for the um, for the Fallout mods and Sky Oblivion trailer, um, you know, we we tease we tease something big towards the end, uh, like in 
Fallout Miami, we tease with the do not enter that building uh, <laughs> line. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course, like you're gonna enter that building. Uh, <laughs> and we just give you a little bit tease with uh, with some interior shots with uh, a lot of dead raiders in on the floor. Uh, and it kind of sparks this idea what's what's going on. I have to find out. Uh, and um, in the Sky Oblivion trailer, you know, we 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 showed the last shot is of inside the Oblivion room, uh, and it's just uh, just teasing. That that's that's what I really love, just teasing, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's a t it's a tough balance, and I don't know uh, I don't know what the correct amount of uh, spoiling is to do. I mean, obviously, you don't want to like just give away a whole story, but I feel like if you look at movie trailers now, that's exactly what they do. They basically tell you the whole plot in three minutes. Yeah, which I'm not yeah, a huge fan of. <laughs> it yeah. seems, seems to be pretty pretty much anything that's like super high budget. You can get the gist of the entire movie by watching the trailer. Yeah, that, yeah. I've never uh, I've never edited a trailer for for a movie, uh, but uh, but I, you know, like um, sometimes, uh, yeah. As you said, they show like pretty much everything, uh, and and sometimes they show you stuff that you think is the third act. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Um, that's that's the best kind of like um, like sh not showing too much. I think. Uh, sure, where you where you go in expecting you know the arc, and then they can they get to shock you because yeah, you, you because, are assuming in yeah. yeah yeah you're assuming you know the, the three acts, and instead it's yeah like, nope. <laughs> a lot of trailers try to fool you. Like um, like there's a lot of um, a, a thing a lot of trailers do now is like um, if there's uh, characters talking. Um, or, or you know you want to present a specific line in the trailer and and then you uh, all of a sudden you cut to a different location with the character saying something and you and it and they make it look like it's part of one conversation right but it's right. like in two different environments and if you don't catch it you know uh, it just comes up as a surprise that that's not exactly how that scene's played out um and that's something i've seen a lot of trailers do now is like yes yeah, Just thinking about it, that's yeah, that's absolutely shots. the case. You see, you see very little actual characters talking on screen. Most of it is voiceover with different footage in front of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a clever. Uh, but when it come to like spoilers, when I made the Metro trailer, I I showed I showed pretty much nothing. Uh, I I showed nothing from the last act. Um, and th and that's that was just a general thought because I didn't want to spoil that. Uh, even right. though if I, I guess that most people have seen the fan trailer have already played the game, but I I went with the mindset that uh, I, I wanted to make it look feel like an official trailer and and then you know I don't want to spoil things then yeah um, so I pretty much left out like the whole entire lost act and I pretty much showed none of uh, one chapter. Um, like a whole chapter when when you're in this uh, forest area, uh, I pretty much showed nothing from that part. Um, but I think, uh, but I still think it's give the general feel on what the game is gonna be like uh, without showing like the lost parts of the game. Uh, and there's so there's so many like cinematic moments in that game anyway that you don't even need that to build up a cool yeah a cool exactly. visual story. Oh, that's yeah, a great that's a great way to go. Um, it's just kind of you, you can still build something that feels like it has some narrative structure and ramps up over time without having to go all the way to the end, and then you leave the biggest yeah. moments for the player to discover themselves. Yeah, exactly. And they and they did that uh, exact same thing with the with the real official trailers for the game. Uh, there's a part I'm not gonna I'm, gonna, no, I'm just gonna spoil it, but <laughs> there's a part in the last act that they never teased or never hinted at and yeah. that was like big big surprise for me uh, and i really appreciated that uh, and that's uh, yeah so that's like my experience for making something a trailer uh and not trying to spoil stuff yeah one of the, one of the things that when you oh, yeah. go ahead. uh and especially if you mix just a lot of cuts like yeah. from different environments you don't really it's pretty hard to like uh uh, you know when you see a movie trailer or something like you can see the like uh what parts of the movie uh, that those specific scenes might come from yeah like oh yeah that's the third act or that's the second act but um but what what i try to make with the metro trailer is just like um mix those cuts together that it would be very hard to like 
know what specific parts of that uh, those part of the games are. Uh, sure. Huh, yeah, that's a good. That seems like a great way to approach it. Um, one of, one of the other things that in that same territory with spoilers that I don't uh, most games don't really seem to do much of anymore, but I think there's room for it, especially in Bethesda style games. Is uh, instead of showing off every single feature, of leaving some of the features for the player to be blown away by. Like for example, um, I think it would have been it would have been a, a an interesting move if for Fallout they didn't tell you up front that you could build settlements. If it was like you just start Ooh. playing the game and then you get that as a reward and it's like you can build this entire town however you want. Like I think people would have been like, what? Like that's amazing. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that would be interesting to see. Um, but you don't really see that anymore. I feel like most most yeah. of the time you get between the trailer and then the uh, all the like live streams and and. and uh, uh, presentations at all these conventions that people do you pretty much know exactly what's in every single game by the time you get it in yeah your exactly that's yeah it's hard to, to hide stuff <laughs> people know um, uh, but yeah um yeah that's that that's that's that would be cool yeah if you never really showed like uh, the base building for fallout 4 it would just be an because interesting they made it again. very they made it very huge thing when they showed it like uh, they, they always said like it's optional and all that but it really wasn't Right, and uh, it was like half they, of their presentation time. <laughs> it was like yeah, wait, half like of presentation time for op the optional system. That's odd. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so are you in? Uh, which which side do you fall on that? As far as um, spoilers and stuff, do you enjoy finding surprises in games and would like to see more of it, or are you do you just want to follow whatever vision the developers have? Like, what are your personal thoughts on it as far as, as a gamer? Like, when, you, when it comes to, like, do you enjoy more running into the things? Or, or do, you, do you find you get hyped about certain visuals you see in a trailer, and then when you see it in the game, in the game it feels like, oh, yeah, there it is. Or I wonder when I'm going to see this. Like, how, how does your yeah, personal that's... gaming experience go in, in driving your... Because your, I'd imagine what, however you feel about it and whatever you like, that's going to come out in your trailers, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, I personally like to find it my own... Uh, and uh, have it as a, as a surprise for me, um, much more than you know, like they show everything in the trailers. Like this is all the stuff you can do. And uh, but I, I enjoy much more like seeing, um, getting teased or um, and exploring stuff for my own when I play the game. Uh, sure. And that's something I think that's something I think that Bethesda has done like super well in their in their announcement trailers uh, or, you know, less first look trailers. Yeah. Um, like for the Fallout 4 uh, announcement trailer, I think is just masterful, well done, uh, and just teasing the hell of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember when I watched it, they just, you know, it's like the classic uh, Bethesda trailer and, and I take huge inspiration from those uh, when I make my own for the mod projects. Um, they have this build up and and then the music really like pumps up and you and they just show different environments like just show a different ton of biomes and um uh just setting just showing like how big the worlds are and how varied they feel and uh and that's something i think the Bethesda have always nailed when it comes to those kind of trailers yeah, I, I always love here, whenever I hear Todd Howard talking about his involvement and how he says his a lot of his job is like making sure that there's a tone set. And it sounds like he yeah. himself, who's you know the creative director of it, and he's getting involved at the level of like the trailer and the theme song and stuff. And it's like that's that's kind of inspiring because I love doing that stuff and I, I love yeah. uh, I love seeing that come together. So it's really cool that they put that much effort into something like that. And I think a, a lot of the uh, game studios try to, but it tends to be that most trailers now. I find that I'm like kind of numb to ge most game trailers anymore. Is that they all feel roughly? They feel very generic. Like it's everything is like a, a Call of Duty action movie sequence, yeah. and so it's like it's all it's all rubbing it's all like blurring together, and I'm having trouble deciphering. Like the only games that stand out to me anymore are like the weird indie titles with with clever graphics or throwbacks and stuff. But most of the modern games look fairly generic. But then you get the the Bethesda games have their own feel to them. Like their their like their engine stands out. Like we can there's something something about the animations about the uh the styles of textures they tend to use and then the yeah yeah and they they really do a great job of uh of making you feel some sort of tone going on with their 
with their trailers yeah, without because I, I don't remember ever i don't ever remember walking away from a bethesda trailer thinking about the story i'm always just thinking about oh my god i can't wait to explore all that stuff they just showed me. yeah exactly yeah the world and the wonders um and uh and just the way that you know they actually show like how the game looks uh i remember when fallout 4 first uh premiered uh, the trailer and like there was this like you, okay, sure. Fallout games or Bethesda games has never been really like top tier graphical uh, mm -hmm. games, but but I mean, they actually show you how the game looks. Is there's like they don't fake it. They don't use in in engine shots. You know. Right, right. Um, it's not like a bunch of CGI rendered out that uh, yeah. has, that needs the little tag under it. That's like this is actually in game footage. Like it's clearly yeah. in game footage. There's no yeah, exactly. no pulling the wool over your eyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and I've always uh, appreciated that about the the first trailers. Um, I, I like the way they've been going since Skyrim, um, and like they really embraced it with Fallout Four of of trying to go more stylized. I think they I think that's a game industry wide thing that they're doing is that they're recognizing that the uh, it's very easy to date your games otherwise if you don't go with something a little less like if you try for too much photorealism and your game can't handle it um, yeah is that they've kind of leaned toward like all right let's just make this a piece of art and and it ends up uh it, so it still has it ha there's I, I still haven't put my finger on what the what the Bethesda, what the, the Bethesda feel is um I can't tell if it's maybe the the character animations or but there's something about all of yeah. their games that have a similar similar feel to them um, yeah but the the style the stylization they've done i think makes a lot of us hardcore bethesda fans like get you know, like we just don't care that it's not call of duty quality of uh yeah, no, fidelity exactly. uh but it, it's always a marked improvement like the the jump from oblivion to skyrim is amazing the jump from fallout 3 to uh fallout 4 is unbelievable like it's hard to like yeah. going back and watching people whenever I watch uh, uh, like Al Chesbreach playing a uh, an old Fallout Four or a new Fallout Four New Vegas mod. I'm just like that game looks so bad now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very outdated, of course. Yeah. Um, but I think like a modded Fallout Four, a modded Skyrim, like they st still look pretty good. Like, yeah, that's why I think they're, they. I think that Bethesda made. Their, I think they're doing a good job of moving more toward a, a stylized look that that can stand the test of time. Like the fact that yeah, they absolutely. they keep releasing Skyrim that we all joke about, but it still looks really really good every time they do. Yeah, absolutely. So, are there any uh, games that, if you like, I, or I guess I should say, uh, game companies that if you if you had your dream opportunity that you'd move over to? Like, I know you said strategy games aren't your necessarily your favorite thing, um, but obviously, like you said, you're lucky to work in the the in this job, so you're not gonna run away from it or anything. But if you had like a uh, dream opportunity. Um, outside of Bethesda, because obviously you've you've shown you would be a huge fan of that. But are there any game companies or uh, that you would be drawn to, where if they're like, "Hey, we want you to make our trailers," where that would be like dream come true stuff? Uh, yeah, that would be uh, Dice uh, for the Battlefield games. Oh yeah, they're oh my god, yeah. they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. Yeah. The destruction that's, that they uh, have in their games and yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, that that's pretty much where my interest uh, for trailers started. Really? Yes, for, wh for which uh, game? Yeah. Which game drew drew you in? Which uh, trailer? Bad Company Two, uh, the, <laughs> uh, the Battlefield Moments uh, trailers. I think they are. I think they're really, really good. They just show it's super simple. Uh, not super simple, maybe, but uh, like the structure of the trailer is super simple. It's just the perspective of one player, uh -huh. and the the player just runs through the map and you know shoots stuff and uh, blows stuff up. But it's just like this scenario where the player and uh, his squad mates just uh, move around the map a little bit, and uh, and it's just stuff happening everywhere, um, and you just you just gave this like very cool feeling of being part of a big battle. Yeah. Um, and actually showing like the gameplay and like this is what you can do and uh, and how it looks and how it feels how it sounds. Uh, it's just all in game. Yeah, uh, and I really, really love that. And uh, and you know, and then Battlefield Three came out, and and the trailers for that was also just absolutely amazing. Like the Dice trailer, like their, like they have their own style of a trailer, the same way as Bethesda has when they make an announcement trailer or something like that. Like the Skyrim Fallout Four trailer, they were 
similar to each other you know mm-hmm. uh, the music can you know show you a lot of different uh, environments and uh, just flows very well when with dice trailers it's just like super well edited with like the guns and uh, the, the music and and it's always and it's all like in this um, like first person view or at least in in game view yeah uh, so you always like like everything you see can happen in this game and it's like right right that, the battlefield moment and the battlefield uh, feel just uh, oozing those trailers I, I'm uh, trying to remember which of their trailers they did and maybe this is the style you're talking about maybe they do this with all of them and I'm just getting them confused is they one of their games and I don't remember which one it was was they did like what felt like in in uh, real world filming would be a, a one a single shot like a continuous shot where it's just like you get yeah. to see moment after moment where they all merge one into the other and just like plane crashes guy comes out uh, hits a tank like guy flies yeah. off of a building on a on a motorcycle like all this stuff happening and like the camera there's no cuts and I was just like that is and it's all in game like you can see all the HUD yeah. stuff and it's like that is clearly they scripted that but it doesn't look like it was scripted it looks in, yeah, uh, insane ex- exactly exactly like. The stuff that happens in those trailers can happen in the game, like like randomly, and right. it's happened to me when I played. Like when I just run around in the game, and like uh, like everything just perfectly match up, and it like looks like it's part of the of the trailer. Like uh, <laughs> that's that's like the strength of that game. It just just feels immersive and uh, cinematic, like pretty much all the time. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's what really got me into like editing and then trailer uh, just the love of trailers and uh, and that's something I think uh, dice have uh, been really really good at uh, making very cool trailers now do you find do you find yourself like devouring any new trailers that come out to get inspired has that uh, become a, a hobby of yours or something you've always done or not yeah I've, yeah uh, if I, I have my own folder on YouTube would just trailers i love uh <laughs> i just make a collection <laughs> nice. so i can go back and look at them and like um if i look like a specific part of the trailer and, and i want some kind of a similar feel or something in mind i just go back and look at theirs how they did it and just take inspiration from everything yeah i think uh i can't remember whose quote this is but something about great artists copy um i think is is uh very true is that you it tends to be that most most people who want to advance things will take ideas from other creations and then just start with that as their ba- base and then build upon it as opposed to trying to do everything from scratch like you don't yeah. have to do everything from the from a, a blank uh a blank canvas you can definitely work off of other other people's ideas and kind of stand on the shoulders of giants and that's okay like yeah absolutely and, and make your own spin on, th- on it as well yeah, I think. Oh, I think that's how a lot of art forms evolve too. Is you start out, somebody gets inspired by somebody else's work, and then they get to take it to the next level. It's like, all right, I know this is my base. Now, what would happen if I change, tweak this little thing, and and kind of ran with it? Yeah, absolutely. So you have, so you've got lots of inspiration from from dice. Do you take in inspiration from from film trailers as well, or do you tend to just focus on game trailers as your uh, as your? No, I'll, I'll take it from uh, film trailers as well. Um, yeah. Because I also want I want to work with film, you know, and and um, as for the most time, like film trailers mostly stand out for me more than game trailers mm-hmm. often. Because yes, you know, it's it's um, obviously they're mostly more cinematic. Um, uh, so I often like uh, take more inspiration from film trailers than I do with video game trailers. Uh, and do you so... and you use that then in your in your video game trailers? use those inspirations yeah mostly like the editing or and uh, maybe sound design uh, mostly uh, okay from those from film trailers at least i i'm always blown i that's that is a difference i see in film trailers versus game trailers and maybe it's just a, a matter of the industry hasn't matured enough but uh i said this earlier when we were ta- like earlier in the conversation is that film trailers seem to be it's such a like well-developed art form that they can make the crappiest movie look amazing uh, whereas yep. I don't feel that's the case for game trailers. I feel like there's plenty of game trailers I've watched where I'm like, meh, I don't care. Yeah, it's it's very hard to make uh, a game trailer for a badly made game. Um, <laughs> I, have, I, I haven't. I personally don't think I've really uh, had to sit down with a bad game, uh, but I can imagine like. Um, uh, that seems that seems like that would be a good exercise. Is pick like the worst game imaginable. 
and then try oh, and yeah. make a trailer to sell the game. Uh, like that would oh, yeah. be a great like, learning experience yeah. for people trying to get to perfect their art. Yeah, like a Unity Flip uh, game. Like uh, that's just <laughs> using assets. <laughs> right, from right. The, like and making a good-looking trailer. That would be super challenging and probably a lot of fun as well. <laughs> it's like a, ga- a game jam for trailer makers. Like we're gonna make yeah, this, that would, we're gonna make yeah. this crappy game look good. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be so cool. Oh, uh, that's funny. So are there are there other uh, mod projects that uh, you are involved in currently that um, that uh, will ex- we will see trailers from you or is it a like I guess I should ask you this, how quick is that process? So like for example, K Constantine reaches out to you and talks to you about the Miami trailer. How long does it go from uh, talking about it to, to fully produced for you? Um, the Fallout Mayhem trailer took around, um, I think we talked about it and planned it for maybe um, three months. Wow, okay. So that was serious. Yeah, involved. it was yeah. Uh, uh, back and forth, like, not every day, of course, but sure, uh, sure. like the first time we started talking about it and till the time we actually started working on it. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the planning always take the longest. I've I've uh, I've noticed when I work with the uh, the mod projects um, because once I start doing the project, uh, the the uh, the process of shooting and editing all that, it usually takes around one to two weeks. Okay. To get everything done. Right. Uh, for, yeah, I guess in the planning you have to figure out what assets you're gonna need, which parts of the of the thing do they need to actually finish or script yeah. so that you can use it yeah yeah exactly they exactly they need to set up specific scenes or uh yeah make scripts and all that and um uh and mostly the music is already done uh at least when i made the miami trailer uh, the music was already done sure sure um uh. I guess. So that gives me a good platform then. So then given that, that it could take several months of communication, do you have anything in the works? Maybe you don't have to name it, but do you have more stuff in the works? Are you still working with other mod projects on, uh, on new upcoming trailers? Uh, hopefully. Um, hopefully I'll uh, soon make a trailer for Capital Wasteland. Oh, very the, cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that because uh, Fallout 3 is, was an extremely important game for me. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm really really looking forward to make uh, something uh, for them, and um, and I've also came in contact with um, I think it's uh, Lou. He, he he's the one who's making the Grim. Um, oh yeah, that looks crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, spooky spooky uh, mod. Yeah, the so total, I'm total looking forward to make, uh, make a trailer for that. Uh, hey, have you ever done trailers for uh, horror games? Like even fan trailers? Uh, no. But I made a I made a trailer for Cascadia, uh, the the Asylum uh, teaser. Um, ah, okay. That's that seems um, like it would be a really fun uh, genre to work in. Like, yeah, because yeah, jump those... jump scares are a special class of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But just making a trailer around like tension. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would I would love to do something like that. So we might so we I'm might see that for maybe a launch trailer for Grimm or something. Yeah, I'm really hoping for it. <laughs> well, here we're, we'll we'll give the shout out now. Um, I actually don't know the <laughs> author's name who's working on Grim, but um, Grim author, please get Pontus involved because his stuff is fantastic. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll see it. We'll see it go viral because I I love when um, the the trailers for these games go viral because it just keeps the attention and uh, the excitement around Bethesda's older titles. And for those of us who are working on mods like that. That's like a, a live or die thing. Like it, like it really. These these things take such a long time to produce, especially something yeah. like the the scale of Skyblivian or or Miami or Cascadia. Is that like you just? It, there's always that fear of ending up in the territory like the 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 guys at uh, uh, who did New California ended up in, which is it took them so long to get it out that people had already moved on to the next game in the franchise, and that's such a heartbreaking thing. Uh, it still got a lot of downloads, but not nearly as many had it gotten done sooner. And so, like when the spotlight keeps getting pointed back at these games, it just extends their shelf life that much longer. So it's really cool to see work like yours continuing to do that. You keep pushing the spotlight back onto the onto the community, uh, so that people yeah. stay excited about it. So like you have an yeah. important role in keeping uh, these projects alive. Yeah, the, it's a uh, it's a uh, a lot of fun. It's a it's a big challenge, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, the I mean the they wouldn't blow up if the the mod project itself was very impressive uh, as they are. 
Right, like you said, it's hard to make a bad game look good. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, you're working with really good quality uh, material to start with, and that definitely helps. Yeah, definitely. So have you ever done any modding yourself? So like I, I know you said uh, uh, you you've mod obviously played with mods for a long time to be uh, this involved with them, but have you ever have you ever done any modding yourself? Uh, no, I haven't. I actually haven't. Just because that would be one of the things I've noticed with Bethesda's mod tools is they would make phenomenal machinima tools if people would take the time to learn them. Because machinima is always has always been it tends to always be done uh, with basically controlling the characters and collecting those moments. But realistically, like you could sequence out stories with uh, Bethesda's tools and do do cool stuff like that. Like you can do you can do some pretty good filmmaking with uh, with these games. So I've always been curious if uh, any people in that. And I had just uh, the last person I just had the, on the podcast was a voice actor who does machinima, and so we got really into that. Uh, and I was always curious uh, if anybody had tried to to use it for that. It doesn't seem to be. It seems like I don't think I think the the learning curve is maybe a little too high for that. Yeah, I, I would love to try that, uh, but yeah, as I said, it's a it's a big learning curve. Um, right. And you've already you be... had a whole learning curve in your own stuff because you've got to learn a lot of software to do what you do, right? I mean, you've got probably Premiere, After Effects. Photoshop, yeah. Illustrator, like the whole, the whole Adobe suite, and I'm sure there's some stuff I don't even know about that you use that's uh, goes into making all this stuff work. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's mostly Premiere and After Effects. I'm using. Yeah, and those are those are their own beasts to learn. They are uh, yeah, <laughs> quite complicated. I, every time I open After Effects, I'm like, oh god, I don't I don't even know what to click on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank God for tutorials and YouTube now. We get to share that yeah, share that yeah. nozzle After easier. After can be. Optics can be a bit scary sometimes. Yeah, but you, the nice thing about the the tools, and this is one of the things, one of the reasons I think we're seeing so many impressive projects that look like they're made by the developers. Like this is one of the reasons that like the Sky Movie trailer and the Miami trailer went viral is that they look like they came out of a AAA studio. And I think mm -hmm. part of that is that all of the community or all of the art tools and things have matured to the point where. And, and we have all this information sharing that it's much easier for people to get to professional quality results. And it's also very much easier to reuse things. Like things have been designed more and more from the idea of you being able to create templates. And I would, a Premiere and, and After Effects would benefit at, from that greatly is that the longer you do it, the bigger library you have of reusable effects. Do you find that that's true for yourself? Uh, can you, can you <laughs> where, where you're building yourself up a library of, of reusable effects and things of like over time oh, as you learn new yeah. stuff you get you get faster because you have templates you can work from and stuff yeah exactly um yeah that's definitely helped me a lot uh, and just ex past experience with the with the, my last trailer and uh, i always want to make my next trailer better than the last um and i use and i uh, sometimes use like um uh, techniques and all that from the previous trailer and I apply it to the the, the latest trailer and um, just make it better uh, you... and try to make it better all the time. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I love that attitude. That's that's how I operate as well. I'm always trying to one-up myself because that's the that's how you get you just keep getting better that way if uh, if you're focused on yourself instead of focus on other people's skills just try and do better than what you did last time. Yeah, uh, exactly. So So when you're approaching your game footage now do you find that it's easier and easier to also acquire that because you know how, you know, like, you maybe have an idea of like what you're going to need to pull off certain effects? Uh, yeah, I've 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 become become really uh, comfortable with the um, just shooting inside a game of uh, Bethesda titles now. And um, when when you I'm, when I'm I'm using a Xbox 360 controller uh, for everything and uh, and uh, and I you know. Like, I've learned all the commands and all that um, in my head, so everything just goes a lot quicker and faster. And um, from my pre previous, like first mod trailer, yeah, uh, it's a it's a big difference. And just just looking at them, like the first trailer I made, <laughs> um, which was uh, the Cascadia One Year on the Road trailer, I think it's named. Okay, uh, that was my first mod trailer um, I made for Cascadia. And uh, just looking at it now and compare it like with Sky Oblivion, obviously I think it's around two years, <laughs> uh, yeah. so it, it's it's gonna be a difference. But uh, just looking at it, uh, it's a huge difference. And um, now, do you do you uh, ever look back at your old work like that and cringe a little and be like, I can't believe I released that? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> and I, I always uh, I always look at my stuff uh, like 
at least 100 times uh, just trying to find problems and uh, and just think of things that I could do better and uh, just learn from it. Um, have you ever have you ever gone back? I see I've seen this trend a lot on YouTube on creative channels where they will go back to like the first thing they ever released and recreate it, but do it with their current skill set. Have you ever done anything like that? Uh, no, I don't think I have. Um, maybe n not recreating it, but um, uh, no, not not uh, not specifically recreating the trailer, but uh, but like making new trailers for an old game or something. Um, yeah, I made I made a trail for uh, City Skylines. Uh, I made one when I was very new okay. with the whole uh, creating a trailer for a game and specifically for City Skylines. But that was my first trailer for City Skylines made, and now I made a new trailer a couple of months ago. And uh, you know, just looking at those two, there's a huge difference. Just just quality and and how I film things. Um, yeah. Is that, that is that anything you would desire to go back and do? Like, are there any of your old works you look back at? You're, you're like, I actually actually really love that title, or I love uh, uh, I I would love to see what I could do with it today. Or do you just always move forward? And you always want to work on the next thing. No, I'm I'm trying to move forward. Yeah, I I, I get let the, let the past be the past. <laughs> I wish I could do that. I get I get obsessed with looking at someone else's <laughs> stuff, and I'm like, that's out in the wild. I don't like that. I want to fix it. Um, so I, yeah. I tend to get stuck in the in the rut of like redoing old things. Like I have a the first mod I ever released for Fallout Four. I've I've got notes all over the place for how I'm gonna <laughs> do it do it over again someday. So to just like just gut it and, and redo it. And I don't I think that's the uh, that's the programmer in me is we're we're constantly looking to get to these levels of perfection of software perfection. Like yeah, and uh, it's a it's a bad habit sometimes because it it can, uh, it can it can hold you back from doing new stuff, but uh, I just can't let it go. I mean, it's fun. Uh, it's fun to to go back to something uh, that you're familiar with by just trying to do it better. Yeah, I think I think it's the same. It's part part of the same draw when we go back to old games, or like you see the there's like just such a massive move right now to bring back a lot of uh, the old game styles. Like the the a lot of the indie titles are going back, or like you just saw. Uh, 3D Realms released a spiritual successor to Duke Nukem built in the old engine, like stuff like that. Where I think there's, I think there's a little bit of that in it. Where it's like, uh, yeah. uh, you get to go back and feel some of those old feels from from your younger days, but approach it with your current mindset, which is an interesting way to go. Yeah, absolutely. So, are there any uh, exciting projects going on that uh, maybe you're not even involved in that you would? you would love to get a chance to do a trailer for maybe in the mod community or uh, game in games that are coming. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, or maybe films. I know you said you want to be a cinematographer, which is an awesome, such an awesome job. I think th that's one of those under appreciated roles, like uh, kind of like the sound designer. Like you're just kind of, you're supposed to be in the background. Like if you're doing your job, you're not really, you're not standing out. Yeah. You're, you're just subtly making things amazing. Um, yeah, it's a very, very, a, but I, th I think it's one of those ones where like the filmmakers, like the directors and stuff are very, very much appreciate. But I think the average person, you know, you never, you never talk about, you know, who was the cinematographer on film max. You talk about who was the director, who are the main stars, but cinematographer is such a important role. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, um, so, so I'm, I'm doing the short films I'm doing, uh, is together with a bunch of friends. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I'm I'm very hopeful that uh, that's gonna be the future pretty soon to um, to exclusively do uh, cinematography and uh, film production uh, together with them. Um, now you have the one the one film you have up there. It's really well done. Like the the shots look very professional. Do you are the people that your friends that you're working with are they working in the industry or are they trying to get in? Like they're all doing it at the professional level. Uh, we're all trying to get in, uh, but uh, like. Uh, the others uh, work as uh, editors and VFX artists and uh, uh, already freelancers as a sound designer. Um, so they all are working around uh, the general area uh, they want to work with. But uh, it's just not uh, we have our own company. Um, sure. And uh, we are planning to just make that as our full time job uh, eventually. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so you've got so you've got some more stuff in production, and then that'll all show up. I imagine that'll eventually show up on your uh, on your portfolio site. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we go. have a short film that will release pretty much soon, I think. Uh, Is that the link I saw up there that says unreleased and doesn't click? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's coming soon. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> that's coming soon. I, I think that that's, that's probably something for people who want to break in in any industry is your best bet is to surround yourself with other people who want to do the same or who are already yes. in it is just get surround yourself with with folks who are interested in that same field because you all you'll all feed off of each other's energy you'll all share tips and tricks you'll share contacts um like i think that's a great way to go which is why i think uh, anybody interesting in modding um should definitely try and get involved in in projects like you know even if your skill set isn't quite there yet just trying to get involved just so that you're you're surrounded by those people you'll learn more um, and I think the same the same probably goes for uh, people who want to get into film editing or uh, your game trailer making or or anything in that in that scene. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Create like just do stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, as you said, just uh, always try to join different projects. And um, um, if you if you're into modding, uh, but you don't. You don't do you don't you know you you don't have your own project or something. You just try to find a group that uh, that's looking for people. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of mods now like in development, um, and it feels like it's just getting more and more. Um, and uh, even though uh, even though there are small projects or maybe big projects that will never be released, just just the experience alone is uh, totally worth it, I think. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think even these projects that don't that don't make it to fruition, I still think it's like a life changing experience for a lot of people involved on the team. Yeah. Like you learn you learn, you know, how you learn how a project can fail. You learn um, maybe maybe on your individual asset creation you you just learned valuable stuff like you were talking about with with each new trailer you produce, you learned something. So even if it wasn't, even if you don't think it was your best work or whether, or if you do think it was your best work, you learned some new things that you're going to apply to the next project you do and you're going to keep getting better because of it. So I think it's, uh, I think it's huge for motivation too. For personal motivation is just keep doing, keep producing things because it just keeps you moving. You're, you're doing stuff. You're, you're getting to show yourself that you're, you're getting better at things. Yeah, absolutely. And that's uh, something I hope that my trailers also show. Yes. Uh, uh, with the just getting motivation up for the dev team as well um, to to show their their work uh, for yeah for the world or for for a lot of people at least yeah um, and I think that's a really very good uh, motivation in general. Spe speaking of which, did you do the trailer for the uh, shotgun release that Miami did? Yes, love that trailer. It had so many <laughs> vibes of uh, it had it had kind of a rage two vibe to it to the trailer of just like yeah, the, uh, the crazy yeah. angry chaos. Loved it. Yeah, a lot of people uh, said that I felt uh, a little bit of rage two in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a ton of fun. Um, Constantine, uh, I think, uh, wrote the script and uh, they had uh, a voice actor who who did it and he he did it uh, perfectly. Uh, a very very nice uh, voiceover um, and that trailer was. Just like do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, here's like the music, and here's the voiceover. And it was very up to myself to create something with this. And uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun with that trailer. Uh, it was it was very different than everything else you've done. Much more yeah. crazy action oriented than the others, where the where you're trying to set a tone or tell a story. This was just like just like kind of unhinged. Yeah, just chaos and uh, just <laughs> showing, yeah, you know, just getting a feel of how crazy the dude is and uh, the shark and his welding, how how powerful it is and how fun it is. Uh, so that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, a different trailer from what I've done before, uh, but uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. That's, I mean, that that's another part where the movie trailers can get you uh, pretty inspired too, is like when you're stuck working on. Um, the same genre over and over again it can start to feel stagnant but you can find inspiration in other in other genre types with the movies like that's where i think movies do a better job again of this than game trailers do is game trailers i don't th i think tend to try and go they tend to be more formulaic and then you get movie trailers which seem to be a lot more genre specific whereas uh i don't i don't get that feel quite as much from game trailers yeah and there's a lot of cool stuff that can be done depending on the genre you're in in there with uh, with a lot of the movie shows. I mean, obviously, like the the AAA level title uh, of game trailers are a different story. But um, I guess my my focus lately has been on indie stuff because it's more interesting to me than than watching you know the the 
Call of Duty 2019 edition, uh, where it's everything's the same thing, just like slightly iterated. I can just I yeah. just no longer care about those trailers. No, uh, exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, it's been fantastic talking with you, man. I'm very, very excited for all the work you've done to help promote all the mods, and I can't wait to see what you put out next. And uh, on, on behalf of the community, thank you for for shining, helping shine a light on us. Like you said, the the, the creators themselves who put together this mod content uh, also uh, deserve a lot of the credit. But the w but once it gets in your hands, you take it from that rough state that it's in and make it look like it's something produced uh, by a major studio, and that's really important. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I if you want to, talking with you. Awesome. You want, if you want to check out uh, all of uh, Pontus's work, uh, I will put a link down in the description so you guys can uh, check out his full portfolio. And if you're interested in seeing some of his film work, they, their, their squad is definitely on the right track because their first little short film they have up there is really impressive. It's very professionally done. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care.